Last year, I reviewed the HP Envy X360 15. It was very popular on my channel, and I called it the game changer, and for good reason. It had the AMD Ryzen 4000 series, a 15.6 inch beautiful display, the beautiful nightfall black finish, everything you'd want in a two-in-one convertible. So I couldn't wait for the follow-up to be announced by HP, and when they recently did, I ordered one, and today it arrived in the studio. Now there are a few changes, a few things that stayed the same, but I'm really liking what I'm seeing so far. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the all new HP NVX 360 15 here for 2021. Coming up. Now, as we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from HP. Starting price with the Ryzen 7 5700U CPU starts at $949 and goes up from there. I have it fully decked out. And that brings the total price to $1189.99. And that, of course, has the 400 nit Full HD display. Best Buy showing the Ryzen 5 model at $789.99 with a shipping date of April 9th. Now they also carry the Ryzen 7 version like I have here, although not quite fully decked out as they have the 8 gigabyte model, and that is a $959.99, and that says coming soon. And they have no information as to whether or not Best Buy is carrying the Full HD display with the 400 nit option. It may be the 250 nit option, so buy or beware. If you want to make sure you're getting that 400 nit display, go to my link below. Go to hp.com and you'll be able to order the one with the Full HD 400 nit option. That is a brighter option and the one I would recommend. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself. It feels very premium. We'll get into that in just a little bit. You get some setup information as well as some documentation, a 65 watt barrel pin connector adapter with an extension cord. You also get the pen. Now the pen does come included at no additional cost. It charges via USB-C. It uses the Microsoft Pen Protocol 2.0 standard. Now holding the unit for the first time, I love the all metal design. I like the nightfall black finish. This is a sleek, modern looking design and I am very impressed. It also feels a bit lighter than last year's model. It also feels thinner. At 4.11 pounds or 1.86 kilograms, definitely portable for a 15 inch laptop. Okay, let's check out the ports. We'll start off on the left side. We get one USB-A port, an HDMI 2.0 port, a USB-C port that does data charge display out, and a 3.5 millimeter audio combo jack. Moving over to the right side is a full-size SD card reader, a second USB-A port, which I like to see, and finally your power port. Now, once again, I screwed up on the bottom this time with the strips. All you need to do is lift each end, get to those Phillips head screws, remove them, do the same for the bottom, and then remove the two torque screws on the bottom, pop off the bottom plate, and then you're in. I wish HP would move away from these rubber strips like they did on the Spectre line. I don't know why they need to keep doing it on the Envy line, something that needs to be remedied. And once inside, you'll notice that there are two fans for the cooling. There's a three cell 51 watt hour battery. I'll test battery life charging times in my full review as I normally do. Now there are two RAM slots, so they're upgradable by the user, which I absolutely love. My unit has two eight gigabyte sticks for a total of 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. And you also can change out the SSD if you so choose, although you get some very good reads and writes with the included SSD. I'll bring you those numbers, of course, in my full review. It has a Wi-Fi Bluetooth combo and it is Wi-Fi 6, so that's good. And they're both working as advertised. The good news is you can also change it out later on as it is upgradable by the user. That's always good. And for those wondering, here's a comparison with last year's model as far as the internals are concerned. And like most two-in-one convertibles, you can't open the lid with one finger. The hinge is just too sturdy. You won't be able to do that. 
Now looking at the keyboard, the big change as you can see is the removal of the numpad and the centering of the touchpad. As a result, I actually like this keyboard. It's working out really well, but here's a comparison from last year's model to this year's model. And as you can see, the differences between the two. What do you think about the removal of the numpad and the centering of the touchpad? Let me know in the comment section below. Will you miss that numpad? I want to know. One thing I noticed early on, this is a much improved keyboard. I like the tactile feedback. I like the key travel. Very comfortable to type on, and I can see myself typing for long periods of time with this without getting any fatigue. This has been really good so far. Now, this also has a precision touchpad that's 19% larger than last year's model. And I have to say, it's very responsive. Two-finger scrolling is buttery smooth, and all the Windows 10 gestures work as you'd expect. Now this being a two-in-one convertible means you can put it into the different modes. You have the tent mode, great for recipes in the kitchen, consuming media. The same can be said for the stand mode as you see here. Now of course, you could always put it into the tablet mode. This is great for sofa surfing and use with the pen. And as I mentioned earlier, the pen is included at no additional cost. So that's a really nice value add. And as I mentioned also, it uses the Microsoft Pen Protocol 2.0. That's MPP 2.0. It's rechargeable. You don't have to search for batteries. Everything you need is right there. And I'm expecting pretty good things out of it, taking notes, sketching an artwork. It's also a tilt pen. So you'll have that tilt functionality for those digital artists. I'll report my findings. Again, I'm not the greatest artist, but I'll let you know how it's fared for me. And for those wondering, yes, the pen does stick magnetically to the side, although not the strongest connection. Now, for those wondering, those two grills on the side of the keyboard are not speaker grills, but rather air vents. And I was hoping there would be quad speakers on this, but no, you get dual speakers, audio by Bang & Olufsen, HBO Audio Boost. And I got to say, this is improved audio over last year's model. Yes, it's still bottom-facing speakers, but I notice it's a bit louder, a little bit more bass, and the mids sound better. So a nice overall improvement when it comes to the audio. All right, let's talk about the display. What we're looking at here is a 15.6 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. That means this is a 16 to nine aspect ratio, just like last year's model. Kind of wish they would move to the 16 to 10. That unfortunately is not what we're gonna get. But a 16 to nine aspect ratio is conducive and very good for consuming media. Watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube has been a pleasure so far in my initial use. Now, one thing to note, it is a pretty glossy display, so you will notice some glare or reflections that may bother some people. It may not. It's just a matter of personal preference, but it is something to keep in mind. Now, it has some pretty thin bezels. In fact, HP is touting that it has an 89% screen to body ratio. And from what I can see so far, it looks pretty good. No complaints on the bezel front. So this is the front facing camera on the HP NVX 360, the 15 inch here for 2021 with the AMD Ryzen 7 4700U. Uh, I'm really impressed so far. Unfortunately, this has a 720p webcam. I was hoping for a 1080p. We don't get it this year, at least with, um, not, not with this version. Uh, 30 frames per second is it good, good for Zoom, good for Skype. I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Also, how does it sound? Are the microphones good? Let me know. Now, a couple of things to note about the camera. There is no face recognition. It's not an infrared camera, so no Windows Hello login. Now, there is no physical shutter switch to turn off the camera, but there is a dedicated key that will do the job. I like it. Now, for those that want to log in with Windows Hello, there is a fingerprint scanner that is compatible, and it was easy to set up and registered my finger each and every time I used it. Fast, responsive, so far, so good. Now this unit is running the brand new Ryzen 7 5700U processor with integrated Radeon graphics and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. And so far the initial benchmarks are looking pretty good. I can't wait to put it through its paces to bring you my full review to give you all the numbers. So stay tuned, that will be coming very soon. So what do you think about the HP NVX 360 15? So far, I'm really impressed with it. Now there are a few changes that are notable. No longer will you get the numpad. Some people may like that, some people may not care. I know a lot of my viewers on my live stream, they do care about it. And I'm curious to know what you think about it. Let me know in the comment section below. We got a three cell 51 watt hour battery. I look forward to testing out battery life and charging times in the full review. Of course, I will test performance, put it through the ringer as I always do. 
bring you all the numbers as far as thermals, everything else that'll all be in that full review. So stay tuned. That will be coming very soon. But 24 hours in, my initial impressions of the X360 15 is very positive. And I like what they're doing with it in terms of the design and, of course, with the performance. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.